I'm excited about today's video because this is quite a fun video for me to make. These are all the things that no one tells you about moving to Vancouver. And if you're thinking of moving here from somewhere else, well, you're gonna wanna watch this video all the way to the end because these are things that I've learned over my five decades of living in this city. They're secrets that you're gonna wanna know before you move here. Let's get into the things no one tells you about living in Vancouver right now. Hey, my name is Sebastian Albrecht with the Living in Vancouver BC team. Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, this channel is all about living in and moving to Vancouver BC. I put out videos just like this one every single week. In today's video, we're discussing the secrets that no one's gonna tell you about living in Vancouver. And the first one that I wanna talk to you about is that you don't actually need a car in Vancouver. Yes, it's true that if you go into the distant suburbs, you're gonna be in areas that are more car reliant, absolutely areas like Mission or Abbotsford or Chilliwack. But if you're in the central part of Vancouver, in the city of Vancouver or its immediate suburbs, whether it's Richmond or Burnaby or New Westminster, these are areas that are much less car reliant and increasingly so every year. And I'm finding that more and more people around me that I see are choosing not to drive. And there's definitely a, you know, another example of this is that younger people are putting off getting driver's licenses because they just don't need a car. But if you have a driver's license and you still don't want a car, there is an option to have car share. There's a few big car share options. Uh, you have Evo, you have car to go and you have Moto. I'm probably missing one or two as well, but plenty of options out there. None of them are incredibly expensive. I don't think they even cost anything to join. They basically just cost as you drive the vehicle. And so it can be a really cost effective way to use a vehicle when you need it and not pay for it when it's just sitting in the street. So people use it to take their kids to school, to make a, a run to the grocery store or out to Ikea or to the beach or whatever. If you're going to places where public transit isn't as convenient, car shares are phenomenal ways to get around. But on top of the car share, we also have a bike system, a bike network throughout the city and a bike share system, as well as a scooter share system. So um, there's plenty of options to, to use the transportation network and not necessarily own the mode of transportation and just rent it when you want it. So lots of people use it. Um, I personally will use Evo to get downtown if I'm going out for an evening and I don't wanna drive my car downtown where it's, you know, the traffic can be challenging and parking can be challenging. On top of that, we also have an amazing cycling network throughout the city that's expanding to suburbs as well. But a lot of people are choosing more and more every day to ride their bikes, whether it's to work, to the grocery store, or to take the kids to school. We also have an excellent transit system. The buses are amazing. They're clean. They're on time. They're not super expensive, but even better is the rapid transit system. We call it SkyTrain, but there's a really strong network of SkyTrain system that runs throughout the city of Vancouver, but also through some of the surrounding suburbs. So it connects Vancouver and Richmond to the airport. Um, also runs out through uh, Burnaby, out to New Westminster, to Surrey, Coquitlam, and Port Moody. But now you can get to all these outer suburbs and it's connecting everything to the downtown core, making commuting from the outer suburbs that are less expensive into the inner core of the city much less expensive and much uh, reduces that reliance on the automobile. Um, so we're finding more and more people are just not needing a car, it's saving people a lot of money. And that's one of the great things about living here that you're not reliant on cars. Speaking of cars, um, there are no highways in Vancouver. That's something that's gonna surprise a lot of people from other parts of North America. We don't have a highway network in the city, no ring road or anything like that. What we do have is one highway and that's the Trans-Canada Highway that kind of is just at the edge of the city of Vancouver. Essentially, it splits Vancouver and Burnaby, not more or less, to the northeast of the city of Vancouver, but we don't have highways that crisscross the city. And initially there were plans for a network of highways through the city, but citizens rose up and stood against the building of the highway system in the late 60s. So we have sort of the uh, very beginnings. There's an on-ramp going from uh, East Vancouver into the downtown core that was constructed around that time. But that's the only vestige of the highway system that was planned to be built in 
in the city of Vancouver at the time. The result is that it's a little more challenging to get around the city of Vancouver because we don't have highways. We have a lot of arterial streets that can get a bit congested in the rush hour periods, but I would argue that it's actually a little easier to get around. Even though those streets can get congested, you don't get stuck on a highway when there's a traffic jam. You can sort of use side streets, you can use other arterials to get around. So there, there's sort of like the positive and the negative of not having highways. But the reality is we just don't have a highway network in Vancouver. One of the big outcomes of not having that highway system built, I would argue, is that Vancouver has a very strong network of distinct neighborhoods. These are historical neighborhoods that have grown sort of from the grassroots level over many, many decades. Um, and they're all very, very distinct. So, you know, if you think of areas like the West End or Yale Town, um, Kitsilano, uh, Main Street, Commercial Drive, these all have their very distinct vibe and vitality that makes living in them really, really unique. And it makes living in Vancouver incredibly interesting. And to be honest, it's not just the inner city neighborhoods that are unique like this. It's actually true of the suburbs as well. And so an area like Mission is incredibly different from an area like Port Coquitlam or Richmond or Delta. All of these suburbs and neighborhoods are incredibly unique, incredibly distinct, and they appeal to very different residents. And that's one of the reasons that it's incredibly important for you, if you're thinking of moving here, to be talking to an expert, somebody who understands the local real estate market, somebody like myself, who is a real estate agent who's been working in Vancouver for over 16 years, helping people move to Vancouver. I've helped hundreds of people move to Vancouver and I can help you as well. So if you are thinking of moving to one of these unique neighborhoods or suburbs, talk to me so you don't move to the wrong place. My contact information is right there on the screen. Reach out anytime. There's some particular challenges when it comes to having children in Vancouver. And it's most specifically, most evident in the city of Vancouver. These certainly exist as challenges in some of the outlying suburbs as well, but you're gonna find it most prominent in the city of Vancouver. So number one would be daycares. It's very, very challenging to get children in daycares and the daycares are relatively expensive. I mean, you can still be paying close to $2,000 a month for a single child in full-time daycare. These are subsidized now and there are daycares that are much cheaper. There is a $10 a day daycare program, but as hard as it is to get into any daycare, you can imagine that the cheapest daycares that still provide a very high quality uh, level of service are even harder to get into. So those $10 a day daycares are incredibly competitive. And if you're thinking of moving here, you want to be applying to daycares well in advance and you want to be applying to every single daycare that you can think of. To be honest, it feels a bit like winning the lottery when you get into one of these daycares. And I can tell you that was my own experience for each of my four children. It really did feel like winning the lottery when we got into one of these daycares. On top of that, as the kids get a bit older, after school programs are a real challenge to get into as well. And again, in the suburbs, there's um, better services around this at schools than there are in, in, the, in the inner city. But an example at my kid's school, where there's roughly 300 children, there's something like 15 or 20 spots in an after school program. So you can imagine there's basically no space. I applied to get in for my son when he st started kindergarten and we're still on the waiting list and he's in grade three. We're basically, we're, we've given up. We're not gonna be getting into it. So you wanna be aware of that and look at what, what the alternatives are for you. Luckily in my own case, you know, there's some flexibility in my wife's and my own work. So in one way or another, we able, we're able to manage getting our kids picked up. And, you know, if we're not able to, we sort of work it out with another parent, friends of one of the kids who can pick up our kids that particular day. Everybody's kind of in the same boat and everybody does help one another. So that is one of the great things. When there is a challenge in a community like this, people sort of band together and work together to figure out a solution. Third thing to know about having kids in Vancouver would be that the school catchments aren't a guarantee that you're gonna get into the school. And that's a bigger issue for you if you have a child entering kindergarten because that's where there's the greatest competition to get into the school. And the ratio of teacher to children 
is much smaller uh, for kindergarten than it is for other grades. So there's fewer spots in that kindergarten. Um, there's more people trying to get into it. So you're gonna find it hard. You may not get into the school in your catchment in kindergarten. It'll be easier in subsequent years in grade one, two, and three to get them into that school. But I would point out that in Vancouver particularly, it's not really the end of the world if you're not gonna get your kid into your school's catchment um, because schools are so close together. You're never more than one and a half kilometers from an elementary school in Vancouver. And so if you don't get into your the, the catchment of the school that you're in and you have to go to the next one over, you're really just, you know, it might be an extra five minute commute. It's really not an enormous difference, but it's not, it, it's something to be aware of if you're moving here. It's something that people don't really know. Um, and people that live here and don't have kids don't actually realize this. All right, and one more thing is that the politics of Vancouver are pretty left-leaning in general. And that's something I think that a lot of people do know, especially if you're Canadian, you realize you know that Vancouver's a left-wing city. But the secret is that it's really not uniform. There's plenty of diversity in political views in the Lower Mainland. Even in the city of Vancouver, there are areas that are very left-leaning. I would say the West End would be one of those areas. Commercial Drive would be another. But then there's also areas that are traditionally pretty right-wing and vote conservative. And those would be some of the pricier neighborhoods, areas like Point Grey, Carisdale, and Shaughnessy. Those are traditionally pretty right-wing areas. And then that's also true of the suburbs. So where we say, you know, Vancouver, Burnaby, those are cities that are definitely trending towards the left. There are areas that trend towards the right and an area like Chilliwack or Abbotsford are definitely much more conservative in their political views. So if politics is important to you, I wouldn't be too concerned if you're thinking that you might not fit into an area that is so left-leaning because there is a diversity of views and you can find your people not just in the city of Vancouver, but in all of Metro Vancouver, if that's a concern. Something else you'll notice is that Vancouver is incredibly inclusive. People are really accepting of other ways of life, other viewpoints, other religions, people from different cultures. Um, one of the big reasons for it, I would say, is that everybody in Vancouver is basically from somewhere else. Now, as you probably know, I am not. I am born and raised in Vancouver, and in my generation, it's actually quite unusual. There's very few people around my age that were born and raised in Vancouver to the point where almost everywhere I go, I am almost always the only person that was born and raised in Vancouver. And maybe, you know, in a group uh, like, like a house party or something, there might be one or two others, but more often than not, I am the only one. And that's because everybody in Vancouver generally moves here from somewhere else. As a result, we all realize that the world is a big place. We all come with different experiences and gather together in this city and people are just much more open-minded than they are in other parts of Canada and other parts of the world. You can find your people in Vancouver, no matter whether it's politics or religion or from a particular part of the world, or people who just like to, I don't know, tinker with a motorbike, skydive or something like that. There's just, you know, whatever your interest, whatever your perspective, there are people like you and you will find them here. But another part of that inclusivity to realize how, how diverse people are, over 50% of Vancouverites don't speak English as a first language. So they've come here from somewhere else. In fact, that's the case myself. Even though I was born in Vancouver, English isn't my first language. I was first raised speaking speaking German and it wasn't until I started going to kindergarten where I spoke, started to speak English. The other thing to be aware of is that Vancouver is one of the, just sort of as, a, as an indication of how inclusive, how open society is in Vancouver. It's one of the most gay friendly cities that you're gonna find in North America and in the world. So definitely very inclusive, very open-minded community that we have in Vancouver. Work-life balance is another thing that you're gonna notice when you come to Vancouver. And it's people that tend to be attracted to live here are pursuing a work-life balance. If you're purely pursuing work and sort of money um, and growth in that way, people tend to choose other places. And they, you're probably more likely to wanna to move to a place like Toronto or Calgary. But if you're looking for a balance in your life, not only where you have an opportunity um, economically and work-wise, because there is that opportunity in Vancouver. There's growing industries, there's growing economies, areas where you can pursue, whether it's IT, high-tech, uh, film industry, 
law, real estate, all sorts of diverse areas of the economy that are doing really, really well in Vancouver. But people that come here tend to want to find that balance between work and life. And Vancouver is one of those places that allows for that opportunity. And you'll see that not just in the physical activity that people do, whether they're going out hiking or running or kayaking, um, but also in the way that people pursue you know, extracurricular activities, nightlife. Nightlife in Vancouver is definitely vibrant and alive. It's not so much, I mean, it's not a New York, it's not a Paris, we're not gonna pretend otherwise, but things tend to be open late. You definitely, you don't really have a club scene, but you definitely have a nightlife scene with bars and restaurants and cafes and people, of, there's a very vibrant downtown core after work. And so if you're looking for things to do after work, uh, it's not all about work. It's everybody is going and doing something, whatever it happens to be that they're passionate about or letting off a little bit of steam. Um, and aside from nightlife, you also have, you know, pro sports. You have the Vancouver Canucks, you have the BC Lions and the Whitecap. On top of those, you also have concerts and comedy shows and festivals. There's just, there's always something happening in Vancouver. It kind of, it has that good mix of being a little bit on the small side, but big enough to have something going on all the time. That's definitely something to be aware of that, that our downtown is a vibrant downtown, even after work. It's not one of those places that just shuts down and everybody disappears to the suburbs. People are there and that's where the activities are and people are coming to from the suburbs into the downtown core to enjoy some of those aspects of living in the big city. And so work-life balance, definitely something that's a priority for the people that live here. And if that's something that's a priority for you as well, you're gonna really enjoy that in Vancouver. And a little bit more about that work-life balance is a healthy lifestyle. It's again, something that a lot of Vancouverites really, really prioritize. And if it's a priority for you, or if you just want to be inspired, this is an easier place than most to be healthy and probably the easiest place in Canada. I mean, part of it is honestly the weather. You know, we don't have to shut down in the middle of winter because as, like today, as an example, it's uh, mid, mid January and it's about 10 degrees outside. Now, granted it was minus 15 about 10 days ago, but right now it is almost 10 degrees and it's been pretty consistently around five to 10 degrees for most of the winter this year. And so on a day like today, you're gonna find people like out at the tennis court playing tennis or out for a run. I don't know, there, there's even, there's some people crazy enough to jump in the ocean every single day of the year. That's physically possible in Vancouver. I wouldn't technically recommend it. There's definitely days, uh, even in the summer months actually, where I find the ocean water too cold, but I'm um, not that tough. Maybe you're tougher than I am, but, uh, going back to healthy lifestyle, this is definitely a place where you're gonna be surrounded by people who prioritize being healthy, whether it's diet or exercise or, you know, spiritually meditation. There's, there's definitely sort of a, a stress on healthier living and it's gonna be easier for you to pursue that, um, whether it's going out to a restaurant or going to the grocery store and finding something healthy to eat or it's finding activities or people to do those activities with. There's countless people around that pursuits um, outside of their working life that are very passionate, um, whether it's rock climbing, triathlon, ocean kayaking, whatever it happens to be, you'll find those people here in Vancouver. Wanted to mention if you're getting any kind of value out of this video, hit that like button and smash the subscribe button to see more videos just like this one because I do put out videos about living in and moving to Vancouver every single week. You don't wanna miss a single one. And I gotta tell you, I really do appreciate all the support I get from you guys. I read every single one of your comments and I notice every single one of the likes and I really, really do appreciate it. So thank you. Now let's get back to the video. Now, another thing you may not realize is just how small Vancouver is. It's only 110 square kilometers and there's less than 700,000 people that live in Vancouver. It's technically not a very big city, especially on a global scale, but uh, it's Metro Vancouver, uh, where we have nearly 3 million people that live here, that makes Vancouver the third largest metro area in Canada. Uh, but the city of Vancouver, despite being small and only having 700,000 people. It is the, the, the most populated city in uh, Metro Vancouver. 
And it is one of the most densely, or it is the most densely populated area in all of Canada. We have a lot of density that the impact of that density is um, the high prices that we find, the challenge for building new housing, and a challenge for people getting around in Vancouver. And it's important to know, you know, if you're in downtown Vancouver, there's basically you need to get on a bridge to get out of downtown Vancouver. And then from the city of Vancouver, we're also surrounded by water where you're gonna need, gonna need to get onto a bridge in order to get to most suburbs. There's some suburbs that are, that are connected by land, Burnaby, New West, Coquitlam, Port Moody, but all of the, the other suburbs, you're gonna have to cross a bridge to get to. And as soon as you're crossing a bridge, it makes traffic much more challenging. You're siphoning all the people into you know just a couple lanes and that's a real challenge for metro vancouver for people moving out into the suburbs that's that's a challenge and that density is a bit of a challenge so a small area a lot of people and incredibly dense but despite that density and how many people we have here one thing that you're going to notice when you move to vancouver is just how green everything is there is life and lushness in the air there's that experience that people have at when you land at YVR at the airport and they unlock the door and you get the rush of air from outside, it's very palatable. It's very noticeable just how much life there is in the air and how much moisture and lushness there is to it. So it's something that a lot of people really love about Vancouver and, and something that people are drawn here. But it's very different than the experience of much of the rest of North America and definitely Canada. Things are incredibly green pretty much all year round. Um, and even in the winter months when most things die and you know the, the leaves have obviously fallen, well, we still have, we're surrounded by coniferous trees and the mountain slopes are covered with pine trees and cedar trees, uh, fir trees, and so, all of that green is constantly visible and at your doorstep year round. Now, I do have to admit there is a, a brief period of time, let's call it four to six weeks in the summer months where things can get a, a little brown. And that's really because as we talked about with the weather that the rain is really concentrated in the winter months and we do have a pretty dry summer, not as dry as you're gonna find in many other places, but it is definitely a dry summer that has a result where things just die back in the very heart, the very heat of the summer months. So that is something to be aware of. But all in all, Vancouver is incredibly green, incredibly lush. We're, we are on the edge of a rainforest and you are gonna find you know, blooms start to happen very early in Vancouver to, to the point where, you know, it's not unusual in mid-January to see daffodils sprouting. Um, and the gardens that, that you're surrounded with, it's just so much nature, so much beauty. And speaking of nature, nature really is everywhere. We are surrounded by it. Um, and most Canadian cities really are because we don't have sort of continuous urban areas other than if you're living right in the center of Toronto. But the thing about Vancouver is we're really a city of parks and the most famous one is Stanley Park, but there's also the UBC Endowment Lands and there's Queen Elizabeth Park. Those are the biggest Vancouver parks, but even the suburbs also have a really strong park network. The city of Burnaby has excellent parks, city of Coquitlam as well, but many of the other suburbs like North Vancouver, et cetera, et cetera, really have amazing inner city parks. And it's also true, it's not just those big parks, but there's also neighborhood parks. And in Vancouver, as an example, you know, just down the street from me at the end of my block, it's really not an unusual situation. There's a park right there and it's about half a block in size. After school, pretty much every day, there's a bunch of kids playing there. There's families that go out there, you know, whether it's raining, I mean, more often than not, it's in the sun, but people bring their dogs there to, to throw a ball for the dog. And in the summer months, families picnic there. Um, and these parks are scattered throughout uh, Vancouver and uh, throughout the suburbs as well. But it's not just that. We are surrounded by nature on top of those inner city parks. And you can see that nature from almost everywhere. You know, like walking down the street, um, you can see the mountains and you can often see the ocean or the river. Even when you're in downtown Vancouver, the most densely populated area, the most urban part of an, our entire city, there are these amazing view corridors of ocean, of mountain, 
And so really everywhere you look, you can be surrounded by nature and you can get out into that nature really, really easy. For the most part, I'd say there's nowhere in Vancouver that you're ever more than about half an hour from being in the middle of nature. And it's not just any nature, it's actually really wilderness nature. And so it's very different than a, than a European experience. You can, you can go up into the mountains and drive for about half an hour from where I am into the mountains. And another half an hour from there, you could be in wilderness that uh, is very dangerous. You have to be prepared and know what you're doing and have maps and be able to communicate. And it's not unusual that people die. There's a, there's a handful of people that will die in wilderness within essentially view of downtown Vancouver uh, because it is wilderness and they're just not prepared for it. Now, that's the extreme example, but it is sort of, I'm trying to push the point of just how connected Vancouver and Vancouverites really are to nature. And it's something that people coming from many other parts of the world are really shocked by and amazed by. So I wanna talk about weather. I mean, there's no video about Vancouver that doesn't touch on this and we really shouldn't, but I'm not just gonna talk about the rain. So everything we all understand, I think at this point that Vancouver gets rain. Most of it is in the winter months. It's not really generally a torrential downpour that can happen, but it's generally kind of like this steady mist or a little bit heavier, but, but pretty steady rain. And you can go long periods of time with perhaps not seeing the sun, but in the summer months, you see a lot of the sun and you can go many weeks with no rain at all, no precipitation. All that being said, the experience throughout the lower mainland, throughout Metro Vancouver can be very, very different. And there's areas in Metro Vancouver that are get considerably more rain and areas that are considerably drier. So I'd say, you know, approximately there's areas that get about half as much rain as some of the wetter areas, maybe as much as a third of the rain. And so it's really important to know if, um, you know, weather is something that's important to you. If you're thinking of moving here, but you're like, you're not really sure about whether you can handle the rain. The truth is, it's not the same in every part of Metro Vancouver. So most of the rain, most of the rainiest areas are to the north and the east of Vancouver. And so if you think about where the mountains are in relation to the city of Vancouver, they are to the north. And most of our weather comes off of the Pacific Ocean and it's carrying moisture that was gathered as clouds drifted over the Pacific Ocean. Um, now they run into the first sort of bigger set of mountains, our North Shore mountains. And in order to rise up above those mountains, they gotta unload the rain that they're carrying. They unload the moisture that, that weighs them down. And so that's why on the North Shore, generally North Vancouver, uh, areas like Deep Cove or the village of Anmore are known to get a lot of rain and are known to be sort of darker parts of the uh, Metro Vancouver. But also other areas further east like Mission, like Abbotsford, like Chilliwack are areas that tend to get more precipitation and more uh, darkness than many other areas. And it's even true just in the city of Vancouver, as small as the city of Vancouver is, the area to the south and to the west, an area that we know as, as Marpole, tends to get less rain as downtown Vancouver. That's to the northern edge of the city of Vancouver. But as you head further south, city of Richmond gets even less rain. And even further south, areas like Delta, Tawasin, South Surrey and White Rock are all known to be areas that are really, you know, sun friendly um, and, and get much considerably less rain than you do to the north. So that's a really important distinction and something a lot of people don't realize when they're thinking about Vancouver. It's not sort of a uniform situation when it comes to weather. And one last thing I wanna talk about is the fact that we don't really have bugs. And this is fairly unique to the most urban areas of the city, the city of Vancouver, city of Richmond, city of Burnaby, these areas and sort of like lower, lower Lonsdale and North Vancouver, you're not gonna find that you're gonna have a lot of bugs. That's a big change for people moving from many other parts of Canada and North America, where you're gonna find a lot of living with bugs is a big part of your life. So if you don't really like creepy crawlies, this is kind of an ideal environment. And, and if you still like nature, you have nature at your doorstep, 
but you don't have to deal with all the, the little bugs that can be kind of annoying. Now, there are some times a year where we see a, a, a little more in the way of bugs than other times of the year. And so I'd say sort of in the fall, we start to see spiders move in from outside as it starts to get a bit wet and cold outside. And then also in the late spring, as you move from sort of a rainier period into a drier period, you start to see the mosquitoes in, in greater numbers. So there's my brain dump, all the things that I've learned over my five decades living in Vancouver, all the things no one's telling you about living in Vancouver. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, hit that like button and smash the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos just like this one, because I do put out these videos every single week all about living in and moving to Vancouver. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And if you are thinking of moving to Vancouver and buying a home, be sure to reach out because I am a real estate agent and I've helped hundreds of people move to Vancouver just like you. My contact information is right here on the screen. Be sure to reach out anytime. There's absolutely no pressure, just whenever you're ready. In the meantime, definitely do check out all of my other videos. I think I have almost 50 of them now, but there's a couple I think you're really gonna enjoy. This video over here is all about the weather in Vancouver, if you wanna get into that in more detail. And then this playlist over here, this is all about the best neighborhoods and the best suburbs to live in Vancouver. So be sure to explore those. Thank you so much for watching. I really definitely appreciate all of your support. Thank you so much. I'll see you on next week's video.